Hello everybody, Dane here, and a welcome to my October 2022 reading wrapper. Dane reads. So I just have the one book to tell you about so far, and that is Did You See Melody by Sophie Hanna. Um, so this is the one where I got in trouble. I almost got cancelled on social media because I posted my review of this accompanied by a picture of Madeleine McCann because it's basically based on Madeleine McCann. If it's not based on Madeleine McCann, I'll be very surprised. We're talking about uh, sort of a four-year-old girl who goes missing um, and there's suspicion that the parents are involved. They're actually serving time for her murder. And uh, the girl also has a prominent, she has like a birthmark on her forehead, a bit like Maddie's eye. Um, and basically a woman is running away from her family. She wants to figure some things out for herself. Um, and we follow her and she goes to check in at this kind of exclusive high-end, um, you know, luxury spa retreat kind of place and the receptionist sends her to this room that it turns out is already occupied and she sees a girl in there and it turns out that girl is Melody but Melody's supposed to be dead what's going on and the rest of the novel is dedicated to finding that out I gave it like a middle of the road three out of five it was okay um pretty generic thriller to be honest Sophie Hannah's like good at doing thrillers but she's not incredible I find that with thrillers in general that, that they're all a bit samey to be honest um but yeah if you like thrillers you'll probably like this one what can I say? That's that's all I got for you. Three out of five. Okay, everybody. I have a whole bunch of books to wrap up for you today. We'll go through and do as many of them as I can. So I read The Gnome King of Oz by uh, Reef Plumley Thompson. This was probably a week 3.5 out of 5. It's just okay. By this point, the Oz books are feeling very formulaic, especially as they were formulaic enough when L. Frank Baum, the original author, was doing them. And now that we've got uh, Reef Plumley Thompson doing them, she's imitating him. So it's even more derivative in a way. Uh, but this is book number 21. It was just okay. It's got Ruggedo, the uh, gnome king in it. He keeps forgetting who he is and remembering who he is in every book. Uh, full review coming soon, but yes, that was that. Okay, then I read Fairy Tale by Stephen King. So this is his newest novel. Um, I like this. It reminded me of R.A. Salvatore's Spearwielder books, which focus on this guy called Gary Lego who finds like a portal. It's like portal fantasy, except the first third of it is set in our world, and it's kind of gritty. There's like alcohol themes. Um, the main character's mum died in a car accident when he was young. Uh, there's an old man in it. It's just, it's good stuff. Um... Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I don't like fairy tales, um, or I don't particularly like them, and I don't particularly like fairy tale retellings, but um, this one tickled the spot. It was well done. I gave it a strong 4 out of 5, and again, full review coming soon. Then I read La Femme des Animaux by George Orwell. So this is Animal Farm in French, and uh, yeah, it was good. It was difficult to read. I gave it a 5 out of 5 because it's Animal Farm. I mean, come on. Um, but the, it was just kind of a trickier read. Um, as you'll see, I read another French book, um, which was a lot easier for me to get through. Um, so I think it's just the way the language is, even in the original, you know. But yes, four, five out of five. Then I read The Edible Woman by Margaret Atwood. So I read this via an audio book, um, and it was very enjoyable. So it's considered like a feminist book, but it was it was writ plotted and written when Atwood was in her 20s. And she says in the introduction um, that she hadn't really heard of like the women's lib movement and all of that, even though it kind of got associated with it later on. Um, and what's good about this as well, it takes like very everyday situations to, and uses them to like hold up a mirror to the world we live in, which I'm a big fan of. It reminded me of Stoner by John Williams and Something Happened by Joseph Heller in that respect. It was a solid four out of five. Very much enjoyed that one. All right, then it's through there, but uh, I read Morsel and Nee by uh, Agatha Christie, which is Death on the Nile in French. Uh, another five out of five. Big fan of Death on the Nile. It's one of my favourite Christie books. It's actually the reason why I have an Egyptian Ankh tattoo on my arm. Uh, and it's got the Eye of Horus as well. Um, and this was a lot easier to read than Animal Farm as well. I think it says a lot about like the original writing styles um, and the translations, I guess, were pretty well done as well. So, thumbs up. Did enjoy that. Then I read uh, uh, Kit and Andrew Chilver's Dad Jokes, The Priceless Edition. So this was a gift from my girlfriend Shay for our three-month anniversary. Thank you, Shay. And um, yeah, there's some. I'm gonna just re I'm gonna do a review of this one. I'm literally gonna read out the jokes and I'm gonna give you a little teaser here. I told my cat that I'm gonna teach him to speak English. He looked at me and said, "Me? How?" So yeah, I gave this probably like three point five out of five, but a strongish one. Good stuff. Then I read The Sound of Broken Ribs by Edward Lorne, uh, our very own Edward Lorne, he's here on Booktube. And I picked this up because, uh, again, Shay, she read uh, Life After Dane by Edward Lorne, which I read back in 2020. And she really enjoyed it, she said it was one of the best books she'd ever written, so I wanted to get another book to encourage her reading. 
Also to encourage you to read more indie as well. It's always nice to support an indie author. This was violent in a very good way. Um, I, I was, I've been wanting to get to it for a while because of the title, you know. Um, yeah, and it's kind of gritty thriller, I guess you would call it. Quite twisty and turny, but mostly just really violent. It was good. Four out of five. And then I read Juna, The Duke of Caladan by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. Uh, full review of this coming soon as well. So this is the first in the newest trilogy. So this came out in 2020. And then there's another two books that are now out, I believe. Or that if that, yeah, they are out, at least at the time you're watching this. Um, and I thought I'd read all of the Dune books. And so then when I discovered that there was this trilogy that I hadn't got to, it was a very nice surprise for me. Strong four out of five. It focuses on Duke Leto Atreides. Um, and like Paul in this is like 14, so it's probably like two years before the, the original Dune series or something. Very much enjoyed and uh, I'm looking forward to continuing this little trilogy and completing Dune again. Hello everybody, just the one book to wrap up for you today and that is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. So I listened to this via an audiobook and I'm glad that I did because it's fucking massive, tiny print and loads of pages. Took a fair old while to listen through to this one. Um, I enjoyed it. I know that Charlie Heathcote here on Booktube is not so much a fan of this one. Um, poor Charlie. <laughs> I didn't mean that to sound so... Um, what's, what's it? I can't remember the word I'm going for now. But yes, I did enjoy this one. Um, I would give it a probably like 3.5 out of 5. It was okay. So in my review for it, I basically said like it's good. It's just... I don't know if I'd... It's not, it's not one of those classics that everyone should read. It is still a classic, but I mean like read Sherlock Holmes and stuff. Don't 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 waste your time with Wilkie Collins, um, but yeah, uh, I say that Charlie's reading his fifth Wilkie Collins book now, so he must find something there. It's very um, very Victorian, very Dickensian in that it's 200 pages too long to tell the story, um, but there's some good plotting, some good characterization there. It wasn't necessarily thrilling or scary, which I was kind of expecting. It was more just interesting. Holds up like a mirror to social mores of the time and all that kind of stuff. And overall, it was just pretty good. 3.5 out of five. All right, guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today, and that is Little Face by Sophie Hanna. Not her best, to be honest. Um, one of her thriller-style novels in this, basically, a mum gives birth to a child by a cesarean, and when she goes home, she's, she's like, that's not my baby, that's a different baby, and her husband doesn't believe her, and then it just gets all very abusive from there. And um, we kind of have two mysteries going on at the same time, because it's one of those where it jumps backwards and forwards, so that we know that her and the baby later disappear and we don't know exactly what's happened so it's got that dual timeline thing going on but i don't know if it really worked at least not for me because i had to like i couldn't tell i kept getting lost in it and being like okay did this happen before this or after this it's one of those where you really need to pay attention to the dates and it bugs me when that happens because i don't pay attention to the dates overall i gave it like a three out of five it was okay definitely not hannah's best in fact probably the worst of the hannah books that i've read so far Alrighty folks, just the one book to wrap up for you today and that is The Giant Horse of Oz by Ruth Plumley Thompson. This is book number 22 in the Wizard of Oz series. It was alright. I mean, by this point, they're all very much of a muchness. They're kind of quite samey, so it's hard to, you know, recommend any one book over any other. Um, but I did enjoy it for what it was worth. I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. I will be doing a full review. I didn't get too many tabs, but I got a few. So I guess if you want to know more about it, check out my review. Because at this point, there's not much point in me going into the details of every Oz book. I don't think anybody else is reading along with me to book number 22. Hello everybody, I have two books to update for you. The first is Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood, which is like speculative slash science fiction. Uh, it jumps backwards and forwards through time, but interestingly, even the backwards in time is way ahead of our current sort of period in time. Has some really interesting stuff to say on like uh, like gene therapy and that, that old age old question of whether all science, scientific progress is necessarily a good thing. It's also the first in a series. There's apparently another book that runs Concurrently, I think it was The Flood, maybe. I might be making that up. And then there's Mad Adam, which kind of brings them up together, apparently. Thank you to whoever it was on TikTok that let me know about that. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. I've tabbed it out to do a full review, so keep your eyes peeled for that. I gave it a four out of five. Um, it is a bit of a head fuck. It's a difficult one to kind of focus on sometimes. I mean, it helped I have this large print edition as well. Um, but yeah, really impressed by it, actually. Um, Atwood, I don't always love what I read of her stuff, but this one definitely was a hit for me. And then I kind of continued the sci-fi theme with uh, Micro by Michael Crichton and Richard Preston. Um, so this is, I guess you'd call it like a techno thriller. It's what, what Crichton does best, really. Uh, this was incomplete at the time of his death, uh, so I believe Preston finished writing, you know, finished the outline on, you know, you know what I mean, he finished it up to make it available for us to read. 
and um, it worked really well it didn't feel disjointed as it sometimes does when people do that again there are these really interesting questions of whether all scientific proce uh, progress is necessarily a good thing some interesting stuff about kind of research in institutions like universities versus at private companies and just a thrilling little adventure to boot as well. So I gave this one a kind of a weak 4 out of 5, but nevertheless a 4 out of 5, and a review of this coming soon as well. So there we have it. Those are all the books that I read in the month of October 2022. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.